Now, the general weather around Alaska. Welcome, everyone, to Alaska Weather. I'm meteorologist Peter Chan, coming to you from the National Weather Service in Alaska region on this last day of August, Thursday, August 31st, 2025. And the weather-related headlines today, we're continuing to watch this high-pressure ridge rebuild across the central and northern interior from western Alaska all the way across to the uh, Canadian Arctic coast. This is going to bring warmer, drier conditions to uh, much of the central, northern, western parts of the interior for Friday and into the weekend, a number of spots, especially along and north of the middle upper uh, Yukon Valley, will get temperatures in the 70s, which will have a tendency to increase fire danger again through the course of the weekend. But another trough of low pressure that's rotating north and west uh, from low pressure that's down in the North Pacific Gulf interface is going to bring some more rain to the panhandle uh, tonight into early Friday before it scoots across south central areas. Uh, as we get into uh, Friday evening and into Saturday morning. And then coming up after I give this presentation, uh, Andy Park from the National Weather Service uh, Juno Forecast Office will have an, a video explaining uh, the Mendenhall Glacier Lake outburst flood, the types of releases and what they look for to try and forecast or tip off when that event is underway or imminent. And above normal temperatures will continue across the mainland into uh, the early uh, first half here of August, it looks like, though it's going to become wetter southwest, south central, into the southeast, especially along the Gulf and into the Panhandle. So a couple of the uh, FAA webcams this afternoon, tan and out with that building high pressure. Some uh, There's a few cumulus clouds, but otherwise temperature there 70 and you're going to be even warmer for Friday, Saturday into Sunday. Dutch Harbor has moist southwesterly flow and uh, rain and light fog 64 degrees though quite warm there if you could have full sunshine you'd probably be pushing 70 but that's not going to happen with that kind of uh, setup and with the moist uh, air mass coming in off of the uh, north pacific it's a rather warm one though at this time no hazardous weather watches or warnings across the state and the fire weather outlook for friday august 1st so we're going to see temperatures mid-upper 70s return into the interior. Could be an 80 degree reading here or there. And relative humidities will be falling back down below 40% into the 30s there. So that's going to dry things out and increase the fire danger. And uh, there is going to be uh, more in the way of some rain move through the Copper River Basin, south central areas, and to maybe a lesser extent the Matsu Valley. But that's coming in uh, latter half of Friday into Saturday. And as I said over the weekend, this high pressure is building back into the interior, so that's going to increase the fire potential uh, with the drier conditions and warm temperatures. So the fire danger Friday, spruce adjective, which is the main carrier fire now in the mid-late fire season, is up here, Yukon Flats, uh, along north of the middle Yukon, and also an area here just north of the spine of the Brooks Range as you get into the central north slope. And satellite imagery, same old low, still doing its thing. There's just little spokes of energy and moisture rotating around it. There's going to be another one. Enhance some showers across the Panhandle for tonight into early Friday, and that's going to come back into areas of South Central, especially Friday evening into Saturday morning. And then a double barrel low. We have one low here in the bearing, another one coming up that's going to kind of scoot along toward the east. And that's what's bringing in this warmer air mass up into the eastern Aleutians right now. Uh, brisk winds from the south, upwards of 30 knots with that system. As we look at, here's the high pressure ridge from just east of the Seward Peninsula, middle Yukon Valley, extending up there toward the Mackenzie River. And then for Friday, we still have this low down here along the Gulf, a North Pacific interface with a little trough quickly rotating back to the west. That's going to enhance some areas of rain and rain showers. Meanwhile, the low is still sitting out here, bottoming out just above 980 millibars, fairly strong for this time of year. And it's getting occluded as the front works its way eastward. Still the high pressure ridge in place Friday afternoon across the northern mainland and into uh, the Canadian Arctic coast Saturday. Still this week low, but this low is going to finally, I think, open up on later Sunday and then just kind of expel its moisture and some showers across the panhandle. Will be light precipitation, but finally this feature uh, giving way. We have this sliver of a ridge 
back toward the Kenai Peninsula, but it's what we call a dirty ridge because there's a lot of moisture around it. It's just a little surface reflection. The main upper, mid-upper level high is up here across the northern half of the mainland into far northern Canada. And then here we still have that low spinning in the central bearing, but pressure has come up to 990 millibars. The front arcing ahead of it with a little weak secondary low southeast of the, uh, the Alaska Peninsula. Not going to amount to too much, but eventually we find that by Sunday, the low that was here finally washes out, opens up, and will bring still some light showers to parts of the panhandle. And then still out in the bearing, we have this low sitting and spinning in the central bearing on Sunday afternoon. And then the ridge up here is going to start to quietly break down. We'll be watching further northwest. A cold front will be coming in off the Arctic Ocean along uh, the north, uh, the Chukchi Sea Coast, the Beaufort Sea Coast, as we head into early next week. In the meantime, Friday, morning lows pretty mild, generally above 50 here in the Yukon Valley in south central. Again, clouds increasing. Also some rather warm temperatures down here through the lower Yukon Delta, uh, above 50. And same thing, 50s generally here through the Panhandle and extending down on along the Alaska Peninsula into the eastern Aleutians. Look at these high temperatures Friday afternoon. Going to be a warm one. Any place that can get some sun could easily warm up 70 plus. There could be a few 80, isolated 80 degree readings, but all through the Kuskokwim, the entire length of the Yukon Valley, even uh, areas around the Seward Peninsula, 68 there, Kotzebue, 75 east of there, Ambler. So this is, uh, this is gonna be uh, one of the warmer days you had. Hang on, enjoy it because we have very few left in the summer season. And then out here through the Panhandle, some lingering clouds, a few light showers here or there, highs. 65, a few spots could scrape out 70 if you can get enough breaks. And then lows again, generally low mid 50s panhandle, 50s uh, throughout south central, and uh, even relatively mild here again in the lower Yukon Valley uh, in, in Delta region in the mid 50s for lows. High temperatures again Saturday could be hit 80 degrees anywhere from Nanana, Tanana, on up toward Stevens um, Village and up to uh, the Yukon Flats. Even some uh, warmer temperatures here along uh, the Arctic coast, 68, a dead horse, 63, Point Lay. So definitely warmer temperatures over the weekend up there in the far north and along the north slope. Areas of the Panhandle getting back up uh, in the upper 60s, a few spots could hit 70. And here is the six to 10 day temperature outlook taking us into beyond the first week of August. And generally southern and southwest parts of the mainland, temperatures will average a bit above normal. A little cooler than normal though along uh, the North Slope and uh, Beaufort Sea Coast and maybe a little cooler than normal here in the Panhandle simply because of cloud cover and some episodes of rain or rain showers. And of course, yes, precipitation will likely average above normal southeast mainland, Copper River Basin, Wrangell St. Elias Mountains across the Panhandle, near normal out toward the west. And here is the August outlook that was released today by the Climate Prediction Center. Month of August right now looks like temperatures will average above normal across the southern mainland and the southeast, pretty much from the Alaska Peninsula, Bristol Bay, eastward through the Panhandle with the greatest probability of it maybe being a little warmer than normal around Cook Inlet, Kenai Peninsula, and Prince William Sound with temperatures a little below normal there along the North Slope, especially extending to the Beaufort Sea coast and precipitation in that kind of pattern when you're warmer in the south in these regions indicates some sort of southerly southwesterly flow so there'll be low pressures that come in and occasionally fling their moisture especially geared toward the panhandle southeast mainland so this area will tend to be wetter in august with some wetting episodes certainly down here along areas of south central but drier than normal conditions expected along the west side of the state especially in the northwest surrounding kotzebue and uh, and uh, norton sounds as well as the seward peninsula and the lisburn peninsula as we go through the month of August. So a big question we get is, can we forecast when a GLOF will occur? And the simple answer is no. All we can do is respond. So what do we look for to see that a glacier release is happening or imminent? One of those is overtopping, when the basin itself starts to release water onto the Mendenhall Ice Field. The second is the basin lake height. If that starts to diminish along with Mendenhall Lake rise, we also have some confidence that a release is occurring. Now, touching on overtopping, in previous five events, 
When we've seen water over top the Mendenhall Glacier, we've seen GLOF releases two to five days after that's occurred. When the basin release begins, we usually see a crest in about 48 hours. And once we see those signs, a forecast is made and will always indicate a full release. During these events, check out weather.gov slash Juno often. We will push out updates as quickly as possible. All that, when we know something, you will have the opportunity to know it as well. Many of us live in the valley and we are equally invested in what the full release could mean.